who? So this all started when we saw this video on Kickstarter, which is about a pot that can express what it feels like. Is it hot, cold, thirsty, and many more? And then we decided, why not to make our own version of smart pot using ESP32? Generally saying, when I saw the product video for the very first time, I was really fond of to get that product for myself. And when I discussed this with my team, my team decided why not to make our own DIY version of this product. And here is the DIY version of a smart expressive pod. So in this video, I will let you know everything that you need to know to make your own smart pod at home. Let's get started. So for making this project, you'll need these all components. And if I talk about the major sensors in it, then we have used the soil moisture sensor, of course, to sense the moisture level of the soil. Then we use this DHT11 sensors to sense the temperature of the surrounding. And also we have used this LDR sensor to sense the day or night time. Then you can get the list and links of all the components used in this project in the article whose link you can find in the description of this video. Now due to a lot of connection, we decided to make our own custom design PCB for this project and in the end, we gave its order to JLC PCB. Now even you can order your own custom design PCBs from JLC PCB by following very simple steps. You just need to upload the Gerber file of your PCB project, select the color masking if you want and place your order. Now out of the multiple shipping options available, if you select the fastest delivery service, you may get the PCBs delivered at your doorstep within a week. So try ordering your own custom design PCBs from GLC PCB to make your project looks neat and professional. After getting the PCBs and shouldering all the components on it, our final PCB looks like this. Neat and very handy. So yeah, that was all about the hardware part of the project. Now let me take you to the code explanation. So this is the code used for our smart expressive pot project. Now, if I explain this project line by line, it will be very long and it will be very confusing to a lot of people. So what I decided or what I did is I created a flowchart of this whole working of the project. And by explaining this flowchart, you'll easily come to know how this project works and how I have written the code for it as well. Okay, let's start with this flowchart. So first of all, the code starts, that means it will be inside the void loop with all the configurations and initialization. After that, in the loop part, it will read all the census data, including DST11, soil moisture, uh, LDR, these three census data it will read. After that, it will also read the battery percentage, the battery voltage, you can say, because we are also monitoring the real time battery of this pot. Okay. After reading the battery, it will just print the battery percentage on the screen. So if you saw the intro, there is a small little icon on the top, which displays the battery. So we have used different, different images to show the status of the battery. So it will display that images as a battery percentage. After that, it will check different, different conditions. So the first priority is given to the LDR sensor. So if LDR value is greater than or equal to low light threshold, what this condition means, this condition means it's a daytime. If the LDR value is higher, it means it's a daytime. If the LDR value is low, it means it's a nighttime. Okay. So if it is low, then it will just display the night emoji and it will move back to the reading all sensor and this will go inside this loop. Okay. So the first priority is given to the LDR sensor because when it is night, we are no, no more, you know, looking at this pot. So no need of monitoring the soil moisture, no need of monitoring the temperature, nothing. If it is night, just go to sleep and do not do, and do not think about anything. Okay. So that's the first priority. The second priority is given. So if the LDR value is greater, that means it's a daytime. The second priority is given to the soil moisture sensor. If the soil moisture value is greater than or equal to the low moisture threshold. Okay. If it is greater than the low moisture threshold, that means it has enough water. But if it is not greater than the low moisture threshold, that means it needs the water. Okay. So what it will do if this condition is not satisfied, it will display the thirsty emoji. And after displaying, it will you know inside this loop only. So it will display that water bottle emoji, which, which reveals that it needs some water. Okay. Now let's move ahead. In case the moisture level is greater than the low moisture threshold, then this condition will be satisfied. It will go to yes. And we'll check another condition that if the soil moisture level is higher than the high soil moisture threshold. Now what is the high moisture th uh, threshold? Uh, some plants has limitation of water quantity they need. So if we pour more water, it may damage the plant or it will damage its growth as you, uh, as well okay so we have written a high th moisture threshold value as well so if it is over watered okay what it will do it will just display an over water emoji onto the display and it will go inside the loop again okay so over water emoji looks something like a 
puking image okay so that's the image it will display when we are over watering that plant okay so if it is not over water what it will do it will check the temperature value so temperature is given the lowest priority priority okay so if the temperature data is greater than the higher temperature threshold means it is very high temperature outside or surrounded by the pot what it will do it will display the hot emoji and it will continue the loop and in case if the temperature data is less than the low temperature threshold it is very very cold what it will do it will just display the cold emoji and will move back to the loop okay now in case all the values are in the range what it will do it will just display the happy emoji so our ultimate goal is we need to keep our plant as much happy as we can okay so that's an ultimate goal okay so this is the flow chart of the working of the project and the logic for this is embedded inside this particular code okay so that was all about the logic part now let me mention the very important points that you need to take care while using this code first of all make sure all the sensors are connected to the particular pins which are mentioned in the circuit diagram in case if you're following our own schematic you don't need to worry about it second thing you need to set the threshold value now this is something which you need to change according to different different plants so as of now what we have did we have provided the manual threshold value the hard coded threshold value I'll just like this is for low temperature this is for high temperature daylight threshold night light threshold low moisture threshold and high moisture threshold okay so we got this value by you know manually uh, testing different different sensors okay so we manually tested the sensors and got these value but this value may differ from sensor to sensor and from plant to plant okay so you need to change this threshold value to uh, make your smart pot a very efficient pot you can say okay so that's the only thing you need to do rest of all the things will remain the same in the code now also we are thinking of uh, the next version is so in this version we have to change all the threshold value manually but we are thinking of to do it in a smart way we are thinking of developing an android application so that we can enter these threshold values wirelessly through an uh, application a bluetooth application so that's our upcoming plan so in case if you love this project if you like if we get maximum number of views and engagement on this video we'll try to make a second version of it the smarter version of a smart pod. So that's the plan, okay? So yeah, that's all about the explanation and the coding part. Now, before hitting the upload button, you need to do some connections. Let me show you. So now before pressing the upload button, you need to do a couple of connection between your project PCB and the ESP32 development board. Yes, in this project, we have used the ESP32 module that doesn't have the built-in programmer. So we will be using the ESP32 development board to upload a code in our project. So for that, you need to make the connection between the ESP32 development board and the PCB project, something like this. Now for making the connections properly, now we need to make the ESP module on our project to go inside the boot mode. And for that, you first need to press and hold this boot button. And after that, just press the reset button once. Now release both the button and now your ESP board is inside the boot mode and it's ready to accept the code. Now on the Arduino IDE, just select the right board and port and now you can directly hit the upload button. So that's how you can easily upload the code onto our project. Now let's move on to the next step, which is the testing part. Now in the testing part, we'll be testing different, different sensors, whether they are working or not. But before testing the sensors, we are still missing with the one step, which is to load emojis into our project. And for that, I'll be taking my micro SD card. So here I'm using a 4 GB micro SD card along with the SD card adapter. Then I inserted this SD card in my laptop pasted all these images into the SD card. Now, don't worry, you'll get all these images into the same article so you can easily download them. But remember, don't change the name of these images, otherwise it, the project won't work because the name uh, of these images are mentioned in the code as well. So if you change the name, you need to change the code as well. So don't do that. So yeah, after pasting the images, I removed the SD card from the computer and inserted it directly to my project PCB. And now let's connect the sensors and test them out. So one by one, I connected all the sensor to the respected slots one by one. And in the end, we just need to connect the battery. For our project, we are using a 2400mAh LiPo battery which we got from a local mobile repairing shop. So after connecting the battery and turning on the project, as you can see, we are able to see the thirsty emoji which reveals that the project is powered on correctly and it is also able to read data from the SD card. So now let's test the sensors one by one. So first, let's start with the LDR sensor. So as you can see, as soon as I cover my hand over the sensor, the night emoji or you can say the sleepy emoji appears onto the display, which reveals that the LDR sensor is completely working fine. Now moving on to the soil moisture sensor. 
So currently, the sensor is not inside the water as the thirsty emoji is shown on the project. And as soon as I take the sensor inside the water, the happy emoji appears which reveals that it has enough amount of water in it. And when I remove the sensor again, again the thirsty emoji shows up. And when I take the sensor deep inside the water, the over water condition is triggered and as you can see the over water emoji is displayed onto the display. So this reveals that the soil moisture sensor is also working completely fine. Moving on to the last sensor which is the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. Now here to test the high temperature condition, I ignited the lighter near the sensor and I waited for a couple of seconds. And as you can see, after a couple of seconds, the hot emoji appears onto the display which reveals that the DHT sensor is also working completely fine. So yeah, after testing all the three sensors, now we are good to go to install this project in an actual smart pot. But before that, we decided to cover the PCB project in a nice or we can say decent looking casing. And for that, we took the help of this black acrylic box. After making some slits and windows on it, the final box looks like this. Now we can easily insert the complete PCB project in it and still we can get the access to all the buttons and ports of this board. Now here I would like to thank and appreciate Kedar for such a perfect design of both casing and PCB. So now we added some hot glue inside the casing and inserted the PCB on it and we also covered this PCB from the back by attaching the hot glue gun there as well. After that we connected the battery and in the end we glued the back cover to make it a complete fit. Now let's insert the SD card and test this out. So yeah, it got powered on and we are able to see the sleepy emoji. So after connecting all the sensors one by one to the respective port, we are done with the casing part of the project. Now it's the time to install it in an actual plant. For that, we took this medium sized blue colored pot that somewhat matches with our Techie SMS theme color. After that, we stick the project on the pot and glued it strongly from all the four sides. But when we turned on the pot, it was an ouch moment for us. The project was attached in wrong orientation. But just by changing one single line in the code, we were ready with a properly oriented smart pot. So at that particular time, the pot was ready and we went outside to get a baby plant for a smart pot. For that, we went to a nearby nursery. There were a lot of plants and we were totally confused which one to buy. Should we buy one with the flowers or one with just big leaves? In the end, the owner suggested us to take an indoor plant and we finally decided to get this one for our studio. So the owner helped us inserting the plant in our smart pot and then we took that back to our studio. After coming back to the studio, we started installing sensors one by one to our PCB project. Now after installing all the sensors inside the smart pot, we were not getting the actual results which was just because we need to change the threshold value set inside the code. So after changing them to the proper numbers, now our smart expressive pod seems happy. So calling it a smart pod sounds a bit awkward. Well, hey, do give your suggestion like what name uh, should we give to this small little pod? Like suggest a small, cute, yet techy name for this particular plant. Do drop your suggestion in the comment. So coming back to the video, so this is a project which gives life to our plant. So this is an amazing. Now one last thing is to test the battery efficiency of the project. Now at this particular time, I just finished making this pot and I didn't get time to test its battery efficiency, but I'll soon test it out and I will be, you know, uploading its battery efficiency test into my Instagram account. So do follow me on Instagram just to stay updated with the smart pot uh, battery efficiency. So yeah, that was all about the project that gives life to the plant. So that was all about the smart pot expressive project. Do click the like button. Yeah, like to banta hai. This is such a cute project. Do click the like button. Do share this video with your friends who you think should watch this video and learn something new from it. That being said, I'm just ending this video here. And now just wait for my next one to explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.